So let's talk about acids and bases. Uh, a couple definitions we're going to use here that you probably saw in general chemistry are Bronsted Lowry's definition for acids and bases and then Lewis's definition for acids and bases. And, uh, when we talk about simply acids and bases in organic chemistry, most of the time we're talking about Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. If we want to talk about Lewis acids and bases, usually preface it by saying Lewis acids and bases. Uh, and in this case, let's take a look at that Bronsted Lowry definition. They said an acid is an H plus ion donor. Uh, in this case, you should realize that an H plus ion is also called a proton. Hydrogen's got one proton, one electron. If it loses the electron, it becomes H plus and all you got left is a proton. So an H plus ion is simply a proton. So H plus donor or proton donor, same diff. So, and conversely, they said a base is an H plus ion acceptor, AKA proton acceptor. So Bronson Lowry envisioned an acid base reaction is simply the transfer of a proton from the acid to the base. And so in the reaction of interest here, we can see that this is the proton, the hydrogen ion of interest. So and it's gonna get transferred from the acid to the base. And that's why on the other side, it is now ends up on what used to be the base. And so in this case, our Bronsted acid turns into his corresponding conjugate base, and our Bronsted base turns into his corresponding conjugate acid, just simply the transfer of proton. Now, Lewis looked at this from a slightly different perspective, and he said, follow the electrons. Don't look at the H plus ion, follow the electrons. And so he said an acid is actually an electron acceptor rather than a proton donor. And he said that the base is the electron donor rather than the proton acceptor. So and if we kind of look at where his ideology was, so he said there's a new bond here forming between this oxygen and this hydrogen. And he wanted to know where are the electrons for that bond coming from. So and it turns out it's one of the lone pairs on the oxygen here. I'll just circle this one. Notice that oxygen still has two lone pairs in the product, not three though, like it has in the reactant. And that's because this lone pair was used to make a bond to that hydrogen. And we draw an arrow from the base of the acid to represent that. And since hydrogen can only have one bond, that means the old one has to break. And those two electrons actually end up back on this oxygen, which is why he starts off with two lone pairs and ends up with one, two, three lone pairs in the product. So this arrow pushing is something you have to understand. It's always uh, the Bronsted base to the Bronsted acid. We like to say that the Bronsted base is attacking the Bronsted acid, but attacking often just means attaching to. So in this case, the Bronsted acid, or sorry, the Bronsted base is attaching to the Bronsted acid, in this case to the hydrogen. So we're making a new OH bond and the oxygen supplying both electrons. Since oxygen is supplying both electrons, that's what makes him the electron donor to make that new bond. So, and since the in this case, the molecule having the hydrogen is saying, thank you very much for making a bond to me. That makes him the electron acceptor. So that was Lewis's kind of path in following that. And the idea uh, also is that the ultimate definition is Lewis's definition. His definition always works. Any acid or base will always satisfy his definition. If it involves proton transfer, then it will also satisfy Bronsted Lowry's, but we don't only have to consider proton transfer. So the base always attacks the acid. If the atom you're attacking, i.e. attaching to is hydrogen, then that's both a Bronsted and Lewis acid-base reaction. But if the atom the base is attaching to is any other atom besides hydrogen, that is only gonna be considered an acid-base reaction according to Lewis. Cool, let's have some fun with this. So let's talk about acid strength. An acid strength is simply based on how much it dissociates. And in this case, a stronger acid is going to dissociate more than a weaker acid. Uh, and in this case, we measure that numerically with what's called the Ka value. That's the equilibrium constant for the acid dissociation. That's written here in red here, HA dissociating in water to form hydronium, H3O plus, and the conjugate base, A minus. Now, sometimes you'll see this written and we leave the water out of it. So instead of getting H3O plus, we get H plus. And you should treat that as directly or exactly analogous to H3O plus. It turns out H plus isn't likely to exist on its own. It's highly reactive. And so it typically comes coupled with water molecule or water molecules as the case may be. Uh, so H3O plus is truthfully kind of better representation of how it really exists in an aqueous solution. Uh, but whether we write H3O plus or H plus, same diff, they're both acceptable. And so in this case, your Ka is the equilibrium constant for this dissociation reaction, products over reactants. And whether you wanna write H plus or H3O plus, that is up to you. You could write either one here. Uh, but in this case, the idea is that the greater of the dissociation, the more products you'll get, the more products you get, the larger the Ka value is gonna be. Uh, and that was the most convenient method for comparing acids numerically anyways, in general chemistry, but in organic chemistry, we are much more likely to use what's called the pKa. So in the pKa, P here means negative log. It meant the same thing when we did pH or pOH. pKa is the negative log, therefore, of the Ka. And in this case, what you need to know, though, is that as your Ka goes up, your pKa 
goes down. And so where in GenChem, a larger Ka meant a stronger acid, for OChem, much more commonly, we'll refer to the fact that having a larger pKa uh, means a weaker acid, not stronger. So it's a lower pKa that means a stronger acid. And I like to think that a lower pKa, just like a lower pH, means a more acidic solution. A lower pKa means a stronger acid. So we just mentioned that a stronger acid has a lower pKa. So I want to just look at a few functional groups here and show their different relative pKa's here. And the first we'll look at here is a carboxylic acid. So in a carboxylic acid, pKa is around 4 to 5. And when we talk about an organic acid, most of the time we're probably talking about a carboxylic acid. Uh, but keep in mind, it's still a relatively weak acid in the grander scheme of things, just one of the stronger ones we have for organic molecules. Uh, next on the list here is a phenol, OH on a benzene ring. Uh, pKa is around 10, so not a, near as acidic uh, as a carboxylic acid. After that, we've got a quaternary amine. So here, a nitrogen with four bonds. At least one of them has to be to a hydrogen. Uh, pKa is somewhere between 10 and 11, typically. Finally, we have water. pKa is 15.7. And then most alcohols are in that kind of somewhere around 16 range. Some are a little higher, um, but some of them, you know, pretty comparable to water for a lot of them. Uh, next on our list is a terminal alkyne, so where you've got a carbon-carbon triple bond and it's at the end of a chain, that way there's an H bonded to one of those sp hybridized carbons. pK is 26, and then finally ammonia, uh, and it doesn't just have to be ammonia, it could be, you know, any regular amine as well, as long as the nitrogen's got a hydrogen there. Uh, pK is around 38. I highly recommend you memorize just such a list. Some people will give you more comprehensive lists. I've kind of narrowed it down to the important ones here, but I highly recommend you memorize some of these. We're going to rank some acids in a little bit, and there'll be some rules for doing that, but there are exceptions, and if you memorize this list, you will not get fooled by those exceptions. Uh, but good, kind of have some pKa values for general, uh, f for a few general functional groups here. Uh, right at the forefront of your mind. Uh, so let's take a look at the following couple of reactions here. We're going to look at the equilibriums here. So we're going to compare a couple of Bronsted acids. So we're doing a proton transfer here. And the Bronsted acid on the left, if you notice, that's just a carboxylic acid, pKa in the 4 to 5 range. So in fact, it's exactly 4.76, truth be told. And then on the right-hand side, that's an alcohol. So his pKa is approximately 16. And we see that the acid on the left here is the stronger acid. And therefore, the acid on the right is the weaker acid. And so at equilibrium, it's always the weaker acid that is favored. And so in this case, this equilibrium is going to lie towards the right. That's where the weaker acid is. So we'll, we'll have more products present than reactants. So and we can see it works the other way as well. You could compare the bases maybe if we had some pKVs instead of pKAs. But uh, the stronger acid has the weaker conjugate base. And so it always works out this way. Your weaker base and your weaker acid are always on the same side and they're favored at equilibrium. The more in this case of these products present than the reactants at equilibrium since they are the weaker acid and base. Uh, if we look at the next example as well. So here we've got a phenol and pKa is approximately 10. And then again a carboxylic acid pKa is approximately somewhere between 4 and 5. So and we see that the lower pKa is the stronger acid and the higher pKa is the, not just the acid, the weaker acid. So and in this case, the equilibrium therefore is going to lie back towards the reactants. So in this case, the reactants will be favored at equilibrium rather than the products. So when you look at the bases just as well, if this is the stronger acid on the right, his conjugate base would be the weaker conjugate base. Always works that way, you might remember from Gen Chem. The stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. This will become important very shortly. Uh, and again, once again, the Equilibrium is shaping the weaker acid and weaker base on the reactant side in this example.